what I do tell them is I understand that you're tired. Everybody's yeah, tired. And, and the spring is coming. And although it's raining in a lot of parts of the country, the spring is here. The flowers are starting to bloom. And <laughs> you, know, you just want to be back to normal life. There has to be some sense of hope. Yeah, there has yeah. to be a sense of optimism and, and that, you know, and so I'm not going to, I don't want to squash that for anybody in my family, nor for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, having said that though, I do need to let them understand that this ain't over. Nope. And I remember most vividly in uh, January, in the middle of January, which is only a couple months ago, you think about it, just That's a few right. minutes ago, um, when everybody was saying that the Omicron variant was no problem. Mm-hmm. It was it, it spread widely, but it didn't cause real illness. No big thing. And let's just roll with it. Things are almost over. What nobody really noticed, because it was black folks that were suffering the mm-hmm. highest rate of hospitalization in the entire history of the pandemic occurred just a few months ago in January. And everybody else was saying nothing was happening. The highest rate for any group at any time in the pandemic was in the middle of January for the black community in terms of hospitalization. So I'm always telling my folk, be very careful. The third thing I'm telling them is this, that we've got two new variants but mainly one particularly, the BA2 variant that is devastating across Europe, um, came through China, rolled through India, and then came to the United Kingdom. We usually get what happens in the United Kingdom three weeks after uh, Mm -hmm. they get it. Mm -hmm. So we're close into that three-week period. So I'm watching the data very carefully every day uh, to sort of see. But um, it may be that the variant will turn out uh, while we know this variant, that the, the new BA2 variant is much more transmissible than the yes. previous one. It is right. very true. Right. But what we don't know is, will it make you sicker? And we're still waiting to get more information on that. And here's what we're looking at specifically. And what I'm telling my family, I'm watching. I'm watching to see whether or not previous infections that have produced antibodies will protect us from this new BA2? Or is this new variant particularly skillful at evading the defense mechanisms? It's like, you know, uh, um, those of you who are football fans, you got a a team that's that's really, really got a great, great offense, and it works well. But on the end of the day, you can have a defensive coordinator that can shut it down. Uh, (laughs) can, Can this new variant uh, have a super genius uh, as a coach who is going to design ways to defeat the the uh, the defense, and so we're going to watch that very carefully. The last thing I'll say and be done with it is, so what am I? What do I do in terms of how do I behave? I am looking I'm, now. I'm going to be very specific about two things. Number one, the only thing that matters now about the COVID pandemic is what's happening where you live not the national numbers, it's where you live. So watch and look up in your local health department is reporting every day, what is the transmission rate where you are living in your zip code? And if it is above a certain number, that tells you you need to be more cautious and if it's below a certain number, you can be a little less uh, cautious. So go to your website for your county health department Look at the data for case transmission. Look at what they say that you should, how you should interpret it for where you are, the number of cases per 100,000. And mostly what they'll say, if it's below 20, you're going to be all right. But you take a look at what they say. And then the last, last thing is, if you're going indoors with a bunch of people and Omar, Mayor Omar could not have (laughs) laid it out better. As everybody else relaxes their vigil and all these people come in from around the world and who knows from what state is this relaxing and they're not wearing masks and the and people working in the in the in the grocery store i'm wearing their masks the the workers you have no idea of what's going on Mm -hmm. where you are so if you are not boosted Mm -hmm. if Mm -hmm. you are not boosted don't go in there and if you do go into those places, you got to wear your mask. You can't take the risk. And if you are immunocompromised, 
where you have an immunocompromising disease or you're taking medicine that makes you immunocompromised, you got to wear your mask. And if you're over 65 with a lot of pre-existing health conditions, you wear your mask.